So now we're back and we've entered our third video in the Cry plugin series. And what we're going to do is uh, add some geometry to our entity and also physicalize it. And I, I'll hand this over to Philip. Yeah. So what we're going to do is jump straight into Visual Studio, opening the plugins solution file. Keep in mind that we're modifying the plugin and not the actual project that we're working in. What we want to do is extend the project with a new entity from within a secondary plugin. And we can switch to release with debug info to make sure that we keep that in mind. And then we have our entity right here, myentity.cpp. What we can do is simply go through the various functions that are available for entity components and see what we might be interested in. One is initialize. This function is very interesting seeing as whenever the entity component has been spawned or attached to a new uh, entity, initialize will be called. This is particularly useful for us since we want to load geometry. On shutdown is also useful when the entity components are being unloaded because the entity itself is being killed. They can, this can happen at runtime if, for example, a bullet is being removed, or it can happen when we're shutting down the game itself. A very useful function is process event. This function will be called when various entity events occur using the eEntity event enumeration. What you have to keep in mind is that as an optimization, we don't call process event by default until get event mask has been uh, supplied. So if you override get event mask and provide a bit mask as right here of the event you need, then when the event occurs, in this case, entity event hide, process event will be called notifying you that, okay, the entity has been hidden. Do you want to do something with this? Fairly straightforward. Uh, beyond that, we have, uh, we're skipping a few functions that don't really matter. These are mostly for legacy functionality and don't apply to newer components. Uh, get property group is very useful and we'll be covering this soon. And this entails the ability to expose properties to each component that will be seen in the sandbox menu. Awesome. Exactly. So this means that we could, for example, have the geometry that we want to load into sandbox and allow designers to pick that at their own whim, pretty much. Then we also have save game serialization and get memory usage, which we went through uh, when we used flow notes, is simply used for debug and profiling what, where memory is and what it's being spent on. In our case, we will simply quickly utilize the initialize function. If we copy this, let's see here, we copy that, move into see my entity component. Okay, we remove this extra tab that we got here. <laughs> See, can we type correctly here? No, we can't. Where's the insert button? Okay, here we go. New keyword, keyword. you'll have to excuse me. So we override that function and we get the tab back. There we go. And inside it, we can do anything we want. For example, we could call the get entity function to get the native entity pointer on which we can load geometry. We could also just get the entity ID, which might be useful at some times. In this case, we'll simply get the entity and call it load geometry. What this takes is a slot index, meaning that we can have multiple sets of geometry applied to the same object in various slots. Since we only have one, we'll load it in the default slot being zero, and then need a file name. In order to get the file name, we'll actually open the project itself, go into the assets directory, sorry, assets, objects, default, and then find a few assets that we ourselves moved into this project in order to use. Keep in mind that these are not shipped with the blank project. You will have to acquire a few assets on your own. I believe we took those from the game SDK sample, right? That is correct. These are in the uh, game SDK in the objects.pack file. And you can open that up with 7-zip and just source to it. It is actually in the default folder and they'll be sitting there and you can just basically copy them over into your plugin or your actually blank project itself. Exactly. So what we do is we simply load the primitive box CGF, which is a static object, and then compile very quickly. And once that's done, which it is now, we have to move over the plugin executable again, or sorry, the um, DLL. Simply pull it in there and start the editor. 
Now what should happen when we drag this in is that the entity receives this call and then calls load geometry with the string we specified. Simply load the level. Find our sample and drag in our entity. And there we go. There is the box. Perfect. A box yeah. just like you planned. Exactly. Okay. So I guess the next step that we want to do inside of this video is to physicalize the object. Exactly. So what we're going to do next is go back to Visual Studio. We can actually close the editor quickly. No, let's not save that. And what we want to do is use the entity S entity physicalize param structure. This allows us to specify how we want to physicalize the entity and specify some parameters like the mass. In our case, we'll set the type, sorry, to P underscore rigid. You can see a list of all the types if you can navigate to the enumeration here. The one we're focusing on are uh, static and rigid. For now, we'll ignore the other ones and might cover them in the future for another tutorial. Then we'll choose the mass. Uh, what would be a good mass for our little box? 10. 10? 10 sounds good. Then all we need to do is call get entity physicalize and pass in the parameters right here. Sorry, if you just type that correctly. Done. Save or compile, sorry. And then drag the plugin DLL in here and launch the editor and repeat the process again. That's pretty quick, actually. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So then we'll do is we'll drag in my entity, see if we can lift it up a bit, and then press play. There we go. False Wow. And that's it. And just like that, in seven minutes, you uh, got some geometry into yeah. the entity and you physicalized it. Exactly. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we'll take a break for a bit, and then when we come back, what we'll do is investigate how to do our own entity properties and expose that to this asset. That way, we can actually have the designer specify the mass and the geometry to load.